of the NICD, you think of communicable diseases, you think of influenza or coronavirus now, and perhaps HIV, but in fact, we have all these many areas that, that make up the, the NICD. So the NIV started off as a virology-focused um, institution. It fell under the, the Department of Health for several years, and it developed primarily around, focused on virology. But then the next reincarnation of the NIV was to be subsumed into the National Health Laboratory Service. And the centres are really disease focused, in other words, focusing on HIV, STIs, um, respiratory diseases. So if we're able to detect increases in diseases, we can then activate a response and to be able to either um, institute an intervention, for example, increase vaccination, or we may want to, in the case of a new disease, find out more about the disease. We also have an extensive platform through our germ surveillance platform, where we're monitoring many different pathogens, both through laboratory surveillance as well as syndromic surveillance. We have sentinel surveillance hospitals in many provinces around the country, and so this gives us a good indication of what's happening in different provinces, and I think you've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic, the NICD has been able to generate a lot of information in terms of who is at risk. Um, we know that those through our data that the elderly are more at um, increased risk of severe disease, those with underlying comorbidities, and we've also been able to monitor the hospitalizations and hospitalization rates, as well as indicators of severity. And the NICD has been involved in multiple programs around surveillance. So that's the other key part that the NICD plays, is really surveillance programs. What is the burden of disease? What is the patterns and changes around burden of disease in order for us to provide important information around how to manage these burdens of disease? The other area that I think is really important for the NICD is training. Again, without the training programs, I think we will not have the people that we have on this particular campus and elsewhere um, in the country. I think a key program is obviously our epidemiology training or FETP program that, that is in, in existence, but also a large number of postgraduates that are, are trained here in terms of MSCs that's, uh, and PhDs, as well as looking at technical training uh, for technologists and so forth. But also from a public health perspective, we also provide training to other professionals that are in the field around particular policies and, and, and so on. The impact of our training is far-reaching. For example, one, and a, one of our field epidemiologists investigated an outbreak in an area in the Free State. That resulted in an investment of more than 2 million rand in improving the water reticulation system in the Free State. Now, the consequences and the impact of that for communities in that area who as a result of a waterborne outbreak have now got an improved water reticulation system. So we are all involved in constantly building capacity to improve the public health workforce in, in South Africa. And this is across multiple disciplines. It involves scientists, technicians, technologists, epidemiologists, virologists, pathologists, and really our work is centered around building the capacity to provide evidence to influence any policy decision making at a local level, at a national level, but also across the region, in SADAC, across the continent, and globally.